Politics is uh, in itself a curious word. I think we use it in a trivial sense when we say the politics of President Roosevelt or the politics of President Nixon or the politics of President Bush. It doesn't really have a meaning. I always see it as having a different meaning when I use it, when I say I, I'm involved in politics or I make political films. For me, the word politics means social change, not moving chess pieces along from one presidency to the other, from one president to another, which is the way I think it's used by the Republican and Democratic parties. Ordinarily, any society that is in trouble undermines language. It attacks language. And the words that we use over and over are familiar and untrue. When you say, I'm in politics today, what you really mean is I have an ambition to become a governor, a mayor, a pseudo-statesman, a president, what have you. When I say I have politics, I mean I want to change the social structure, that I see something out there that's wrong, I see something out there that's sick, I see something out there that means that there's injustice, that uh, people are denied the basic ordinary dignity of life, and so that implies social change. And that's a different meaning of politics. You won't find my meaning in the dictionary. You find one that's closer to the other one. But words aren't necessarily circumscribed by dictionaries because words are really circumscribed by life. And when we live in high political moments, then the word politics has a different meaning. We had politics in the 60s simply because a great many young people became tremendously involved with the hope of social change. And that's why we're in such a quiescent period now, because it failed. The system was strong enough. This is the strength of democracies, that they create the illusion of change. But in fact, what they do is permit change, a certain kind of change. And when the students in the 60s got hard, they were crushed. Chicago, the 1968 Chicago riots were by the police, not by the students. And that police riot was planned. The point of that police riot was to go out over world television to say that the United States government would take no more of this. That if you were willing to have your skull cracked, if you were willing to spend a few days in jail crowded like sheep, if you were willing to have your record destroyed forever and go into a permanent FBI file, then you could demonstrate in that way. And if not, not. And that's a simple and cruel way of, and it took place all over the country. The nature of the police went back to the period of the 1880s and 90s when the police beat, killed, mowed down so-called anarchists in the Haymarket riots and those other riots. The police moved into that same position in the 60s because the game was getting out of control. The game was no longer played by the government's rules. And Kent State was the height of it. When the, when the National Guard could fire on harmless, peaceful demonstrators and kill them, a very clear message was sent to the young people of this country and to all people who were political, in the sense that I use that word, then you had either the end of the movement or revolution. And of course, it was the end of the movement and a kind of slow death for political ideas. We no longer have politics, as I use that word. But I think we're on the verge of it, and I think that's why we're making this film. I think we're on the verge of a new kind of social change History doesn't repeat itself. It only appears to repeat itself. The new change can't, the form of the new change cannot be predicted. We will be aware of that form as it takes place. 